My name is Susan Gerhard. Welcome to Village in Motion. Today is Monday, July 25th, 2016, and I'm joined here in the studio today with a whole crowd of people and a lot of educational material to share with you. Here on my left, I have Marie Lee. Marie is a Green Spring resident, and Marie is here today partially because of the fact that Marie has profound hearing loss, which means she can't hear much of anything without the cochlear implant that assists her in hearing. Marie is the leader of our Green Spring Hearing Loss Support Group. And those of you who have attended that group know that she has been a very active educator in our community for helping us learn more about ways to assist us in learning more about how we can hear better. And Marie has brought to our group today two other guests. On her left is Debbie Jones. Debbie comes to us from the Northern Virginia Resources Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Persons, also known as the NVRC. And Debbie is the NVRC Technology Specialist. She is in charge of their demonstration room, which is a wonderful place uh, that has a variety of assistive devices and technology available for those who visit there, and we'll be learning more about that. She is a resource and technology specialist there. To Debbie's left, we have Bonnie O'Leary. Bonnie, for those of you who attended last week's Green Spring Hearing Loss Support Group meeting, is the outreach specialist at NVRC. And she is a late deafened adult, also wearing co cochlear implants, and she applies her own personal experience with hearing loss to her outreach work, work with senior citizens, their families, and caregivers throughout this Northern Virginia area. area excuse me. <clears throat> Debbie, let's start with you. Can you tell us what an assistive listening and alerting device is, because that's what we're going to be talking about here today. Sure. Um, an assistive listening device is a device that helps you hear better, basically. Um, be, maybe your hearing has dropped over the years. Uh, maybe you were exposed to loud noise uh, during your career. Your hearing has changed. An assistive listening device can help turn up that volume so that you can hear better. An alerting device is something that gives you, um, lets you know what's going on in your environment. So if you can't hear as well, maybe you need it louder. So you've got a louder ring on the phone, a louder ring on the, t on the doorbell. If you can't hear the sound anymore, maybe you need a light to flash. So those are the, some of the kinds of devices that are available out so there. So alerting me in a variety of ways that I need to react to something. Right. Okay. Is this the same as a hearing aid? Is a hearing aid an assistive listening device? It is not considered as such. I mean, certainly a hearing aid helps you hear better, but it is more tailored to your personal hearing loss. An assistive listening device can be used by someone who doesn't have a hearing aid, maybe is not ready for one yet, um, but gives them that increased access to sound. Can an assistive listening or alerting device be used by someone who has a hearing aid? Most definitely. So these tools that we're going to talk about today can be used both by people who have hearing aids and by people who do not have hearing aids. That is correct. Okay. I think we have that clear. <clears throat> so let's start with the device that many people here at Greenspring are familiar with, and that is the FM transmitter. And Marie is going to talk to us about that. These are the, the devices that we have available to us. Where, Marie? Uh, Greenspring <coughs> has provided these devices in the four large venues of Greenspring. So they are available in the Village Square Theater, in the Akatink Room at Village Square, in the Conference Room at Hunter's Crossing, and where's the last place? <laughs> Akatink. Wait, I have a list. Well, there's the one. chapel. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. And most and most important, I think, is the chapel because there are many people who go into the chapel and cannot hear the sermon. 
So this device is really simple and it picks up the sound through the sound system. It goes directly to your ear through the earpiece and it's important to make sure when you pick up one of these devices which are available for use in those four venues to straighten out the cord which also acts as the antenna. You put this little thing and hook it into your ear, turn it on, and then go to the channel that is preset for one of those four venues. So it's very easy to use. You can also use it outside of Greenspring at um, other venues that may have the same FM transmitting system. So that this is the FM receiver. So you can change the channel on it to another venue if necessary. So if I am using it in a venue in Greenspring and I am in, so let's say I'm in the theater, mm -hmm. theater, I should not change the channel. It is, if, it, if this receiver belongs in the theater, leave the channel where it is because it is preset for the theater. Yes, it is. That's correct. <coughs> now, um, we offered a group buy on this particular model for people who wanted their own personal FM receiver. These are cleaned, but not as often as you might want it cleaned for your own personal ear health. And, um, and I'm sure that we can continue to get that special price if anyone is interested in having his or her own FM receiver. Um, and if I were interested, how would I get one? Should I contact you? Contact me or come to Channel 6 and, and they know all the information about it also. This comes with six preset channels. And the four of those six preset channels are the channels that we use here at Greenspring. So even if you have your own and you go in from the theater, you're using channel 10 or whatever channel it might be, and you go into the theater, it's very simple to just push a little button and it will come up with a new setting. So it's rather a really simple device. The important thing is to turn it on and off. If I had my own, how would I know if I went into a room what channel to set it on for that room? Uh, well, anyone who has purchased one of these through the group buy, I've put a, um, a label on it. Oh, there's a label on the... On, that that okay. shows... I've put a personal label on it so that they know what channel is in which room. And I've also put their name and apartment number in case they accidentally leave it someplace. So hopefully it will walk back to them. Now, I understand that these also can be used in some movie theaters, is that correct? Yes. If yes. I took my own personal one to a movie theater, I would need to ask at the theater what channel to set it on? That's correct. And also to know how to set it to that channel if it's not one of the six that are preset into this device. Okay. I have just one more question. If I'm wearing a hearing aid, should I take the hearing aid out in order to use this? <clears throat> if you're wearing a hearing aid that is in your ear, then you would need to take it out to put this in. Okay. If you have two of that type of hearing aid, you only need to take out one. But if you're wearing a hearing aid that is behind your ear, you probably don't need to take it out, whichever okay. is your preference. Okay. Some people say they can hear fine with just this. The important thing is that the sound is coming directly from the sound system or the microphone to this earpiece, to your ear, and it's blocking out all of the other noise. Okay. So it's very convenient. Excellent. That's good. All right, let's move on to some of these other wonderful devices that we have here. I'm going to, to move to Debbie, who is the expert on all of these. Debbie, let's go next to, if we may, to something called a pocket talker. A pocket talker, or basically a personal amplifier. A personal amplifier. Right, and this is a device that lets you turn up the sound on the folks that you're chatting with. Okay, so this is an example of one. Okay. It's got a, a clip here on the back, so you can clip it to your clothing. And then you wear a headphone or an earbud, whatever your preference is. 
um, and it lets you adjust the sound. So again, because the sound is coming directly to your ears, it lowers that background interference. Um, and this is for one-on-one -on -one small groups. Mm -hmm. um, this is great for riding in the car. So, you know, you can hear the driver better. Um, that sort of situation. Okay. Now, is this designed for a person who is wearing hearing aids or for a person who maybe is having just a little bit of trouble hearing? This is usually where folks start. Okay. Um, maybe they're not ready to try the hearing aids yet, but they still find they need some kind of help. Mm -hmm. So this can be a starting point. And what is the cost of this type of device? They can run, I mean, depending on bells and whistles. The, um, I've seen them for sale as low as $99 um, and for as much as 200 So you, this is the kind of thing you want to do some shopping around mm -hmm. because different companies will have sales at different times of the year. Okay. And where would one buy a device like this? They're um, primarily through catalog companies. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we no longer have a local store in the area that you can go and pick these up. Mm -hmm. However, we know of some very reputable catalog companies um, that have been around for quite a while. And our, our office keeps a list of those companies. So this is where the value of your resource center comes in, that someone who, who might want to investigate a device like this could contact you and you could give them the name of what you know to be a reputable company so that they're not ordering it by some fly -by, from some fly-by-night company. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. And, and we're also a place where if they want to, they can make an appointment and come try it out first. Excellent. Um, so, so that they the, have an idea of what that experience is before they order it. And I, excellent. And I remember, Bonnie, from your presentation the other day, the importance of making an appointment with Debbie, that you are not there 24-7 that you you are an outreach person also right. but the, that any of these devices someone can come to your studio there mm -hmm. and try these out and see that if, if it's appropriate for you right. okay right excellent thank you sure then what's next 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 would be something that could be used for the television and we see this a lot we see this advertised on television and in magazines right um, and actually the um, there's one brand that's on TV quite a bit, mm -hmm. and it's actually a pretty good device. You know, sometimes on those those for TV only, yeah. um, get a little, you know, iffy. Mm -hmm. But it's actually a fairly good device. Um, there's a couple different types of these. Some go over the head. Some go in the ears like a stethoscope. Uh -huh. um, and if your hearing aids are set properly, there's also some that can just hang around your neck. Uh -huh. Okay, and that's this kind here. Okay, let's let's go back to the to the first one though. Okay. How does how does exactly that work? Okay, so what happens is this piece um, plugs into the audio out on your television set. Okay, and it sits next to, in front of, on top of, depending on your TV. Okay, and it uses infrared light to send a signal to the headset, and then the headset is where you can turn the volume up or down. Okay. So I have this on my ears, mm -hmm. and if I'm having difficulty hearing the television, I hear it here, mm -hmm. but my partner sitting beside me is not going to, I'm go I can turn it up as loud as I want, but my partner who doesn't have difficulty hearing is not going to have to have the volume up as high as I might need it. Right. Okay. Right, so this gives you your personal volume adjustment. Okay. Excellent. And then the TV can stay at a more comfortable level for the other people in the room. Okay. Excellent. That's good to know. Now, the other one that, I'm sorry I interrupted no, you. No, that's quite all right. So <laughs> this is for people who have, and we're about to introduce a new term here, something called a T-coil. A T-coil. Which is built into some hearing aids. That is correct. So if your hearing aids have a special little coil of wire built into them, mm -hmm. that wire can pick up signals, magnetic waves, basically, um, from devices like this. And so this doesn't have to, you don't have to have something coming up to your ear. It communicates wirelessly with your hearing aid. So this just sits around your neck like that. Mm -hmm. And you set your hearing aid to the proper channel, which your audiologist can show you. And then this is giving you that signal straight to your ear. And again, this is your volume control. This piece plugs into the audio out of your television set. 
So. Now, the question would, would be, of course, how do I know if my hearing aid has something called a T-coil? And the answer, I am guessing, would be ask your audiologist. And what I learned from Marie's meeting the other day was that a lot of people may have a T-coil built into their hearing aid and don't know it. Right. Kind of like a, it's kind of like our cars. They do a whole lot of things that you'd have to read page 497 of your manual to know that it's there. You, it may be built into your hearing aid and you don't know it. That's correct. I think hearing aids are, are like our cars. They do a lot of things that we don't know about. <laughs> so it, this may be something that is available to you that you're not aware of. Right. And it's always good to talk to your audiologist. Excellent. What is our next toy? Okay. Um, that would be telephones. Okay. Okay. Let me hold this one up. Sure thing. This is an amplified telephone. Okay. And just under the screen, you can see two little buttons. One says tone and one says volume. And what's the difference? So a volume turns up the sound, turns up the loudness, can make it louder or softer. Tone adjusts the frequency. Do you need higher pitch or do you need lower pitch in order to hear better? Because hearing loss, we lose some of those tones and, and we have to boost them up in order to actually recognize them. And so having a phone that can do both volume and tone gives you more clarity on the telephone. So okay. this is the volume as I hear it through here, right. not the volume as, the, as it rings. Correct. Okay. Now this does have adjustable ringer. Okay. So you can have a loud, medium, soft ringer. It also at the bottom there has a light that will flash when the phone rings. So this is really, this really has a lot of features. Right. That would help someone with a hearing loss. Right. This, um, so louder, these... louder here, mm -hmm. louder ring on the phone. Right. Adjusting the tone, so depending on where my hearing loss is. Right. Okay. And, and the flashing, flashing light. And these wonderful big buttons. <laughs> A lot of them tend to have the larger buttons okay. as well. Um, this one is also a speakerphone. Uh, for some people with hearing loss, not all, it, it's kind of catch or miss. Um, sometimes using the speakerphone helps you understand better because you can use both ears and not just the one ear that has the hearing loss. So for some people, a speakerphone is helpful. For others, it's just garble. But that's another feature that you can investigate. OK. Excellent. OK. All right. Now, if you're still struggling, even though you've got an amplified phone, mm -hmm. if you're still struggling to understand, and that happens sometimes, you can look at maybe a captioned telephone, and which that is, is similar to what you have right there. And there's a couple different models out there. But basically, it gives you a printout of what the other person is saying to you. And those words appear on the screen. And you still are able to hear their voice. You can hear their pitch and everything else. But if you don't quite catch what they said, you didn't quite understand that word, it comes up on the screen. There's about three to five uh, seconds delay, but it's there. So this is similar to, oh, now I forget the name of the service, where, um, where a person who is deaf the relay. The relay service. Yes, yes it is similar considered. To that. It is a considered part of the relay services okay. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so if I'm if I am a person who is having difficulty hearing, and I'm talking, is what I say showing up here? No, it is not. So I say hello, Debbie, and what you say back to me shows up here. Exactly. After a short delay. Right. Okay. But you can still hear them through the handset. I can, but if I am having difficulty hearing them, right. hearing it's also showing up here. Yes. Excellent. Any other features of this type of phone? Again, you've got the, the adjustable ringer. So how loud is it? Okay. Um, what pitch is it? Is it a high sound? Is it a low sound? To get your attention. Mm -hmm. The screen also flashes as the phone okay. rings to get your attention. Now, Marie has advised us that not all brands of this phone are operable here at Greenspring. So if you're thinking about a captioned phone, it might be very wise to not only talk to Debbie about phones to buy, but talk to Marie about what her research has learned right. about what phones will actually work with our phone system here at Greenspring. And that's very important to, to find out first before you go 
yes. purchasing these. <clears throat> okay, I know our time is passing here. I'm getting okay. signals. So, and there's there's a, a device that I want to make very sure that we talk about because I think these are super important. Yes. Let's talk about this. Right. What this, is this? This is a visual smoke detector. So this piece in your right hand goes up on the wall or on the ceiling and it has a transmitter built in so that if it detects smoke, it sends a signal to the strobe light. And this can be by the bed or in the living room, wherever you spend you know, the most time. Um, some of these will also have a bed shaker. And so when this sends that signal saying, I see smoke, this starts to flash. And if you've got the bed shaker, it starts to shake the bed. OK? Excellent. And so it gets your attention to let you know that there is something going on. OK. Now, uh, this one is one that I could install myself. Correct. If I had the skills. I uh, hear at Green Spring, we could also pay our maintenance people to install it for us. This, this one happens to belong to Marie. And Marie was telling me that this will do, this strobe could also be hooked up to work for a ringing phone. Mm -hmm for a doorbell right. as well as, and for fire. Yes. Keeping in mind that as a fire detector, it's not going to tell anybody but you. So it's, it's not as if it's going to be a central station fire alarm. Correct. But for, for your personal notification, this would work well. Now, I'm sure you'd have to investigate these and figure out you know, how to hook it up for a phone or a door. But just the fact the use of a strobe light to alert you, it's really an excellent, excellent uh, idea. Marie, where did you buy this? Again, I bought this as an online purchase from one of those reputable catalog okay. companies so which again, are now online. Um, <clears throat> and you can ask the customizing service at Greenspring to install a strobe light fire detector, which is connected to the central alarm system. So that would be something like this. That would be something like that. Right. And they will install it and, and charge you for the cost of installation. And then it's connected to the security system here at Greenspring. If someone has a fire in an adjoining apartment to mine, Mine is not going to get the smoke until it comes into my apartment. So this is not going to be quite as safe as having one that is hardwired into the security system here at Greenspring. So although this would be an added expense, this may be well worth, for your own safety, this may be well worth your investment. Yes, if you don't have some other way to alert you to a fire or a smoke alarm, some dogs can be trained to alert yes. people. But, um, but husbands I, can be trained. Husbands to alert can people. be trained. Yes, <laughs> right. Um, again, and Marie learned about this through your resources center. Uh, another good uh, bit of advice there. And Marie, I understand that you are considering uh, getting a bus to visit the resources center. Yes, I've uh, I've made one contact. I have one more contact to make. And we're hoping to get a bus of people who are interested to go out and see the resource center, to visit the technology room and have Debbie give us a demonstration. And then perhaps have Bonnie give us a presentation in their meeting room, which does have the hearing loop for T-coil users. So we can get an example of how this might work here at Greenspring, even for a portion of our theater or a portion of our chapel to have a loop in. People who have the T-coil can um, use that. So that's that's what we're hoping. But we are planning, maybe when the weather gets a little cooler, to uh, visit NVRC with a busload of people from Green Springs. So I that, will, I'll keep people alerted about that. That's good. I'm sure you will. You're a terrific publicist. I see another toy here that we haven't looked at. Debbie, can you talk to us about this? Similar to the strobe light, this is a device that will alert to the telephone, the doorbell, um, a baby cry monitor, um, different devices. And so it will flash the light that's built into it. It comes with a wireless doorbell. So you don't have to run any wires. You just attach this outside hit this and that will start to flash and buzz. 
could, could multiples of these be tied to one doorbell? Certainly. Actually, that's the way this works. This is the base unit. So the doorbell sends a signal to this unit, and then this sends a signal out to any remotes. So you could have this in the bedroom, because this also has the bed shaker, and then have uh, just a light in, in your other rooms that okay. will flash. It's kind of like having many telephones. Exactly. Okay. That's excellent. And, and I like the fact that it has life. This is also a, a telephone, I guess, or a, a clock? It is a clock, yes, okay. an alarm clock and as it well. And it has nice large nice, numbers large on numbers. it. Okay, that's good. So and there, uh, Many people have asked me about alarm clocks for getting up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And there are many devices available for shaking under the pillow or for lighting up. Um, or putting something underneath your mattress and it shakes you awake. Mm -hmm. I guess I just use the cat jumping on me. That's <laughs> not quite as reliable, I guess. Well, they don't have snooze alarms. <laughs> they don't have snooze alarms, right. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, I think we just have a couple of minutes left here. Uh, one thing that I think we want to make very clear here is that all of these devices are wonderful and your educational programs, all three of you are wonderful. We want to make very sure that people understand that if you feel that you are not hearing as well as you have in the past, that the most important message that these ladies want to get through to you is that the place to start is not in a catalog, it's not on the internet, it's not talking to someone else. The place to start is with your doctor your primary care physician. There may be something physically wrong. Go through that step first. Then let your doctor refer you for other help depending on what he or she determines is happening with you. Because you can spend a lot of time, a lot of money, and perhaps have something go very wrong that could be something other than whatever kind of hearing loss. So I, am I correct in, in that yes, advice, ladies? Very correct. Yeah. Because it, there are, at your meeting the other day, you were showing us a flyer for some one of the, the hearing aid companies, you know, free this, free that. And I think we, we tend to think, oh, it's on the internet, it must be right, that we forget that you know, the basic step is, is to start with your doctor. Are there any final words that you'd like to tell us today? Uh, I would just like to say as a hearing aid wearer that I was very surprised when I first got my hearing aids that there were more things to help me than just my hearing aids. I thought that was it. And I meet people all the time in my outreach work who have no idea that there are so many other things that can help them with the TV or the telephone or whatever because they think or they are led to believe that their hearing aids are going to be solving a lot of problems and that's just the beginning. So I was very excited to learn how many other things I could use with my hearing aids uh, that would help me live a better life. You know, I could watch the TV, I could know when somebody was at the door, I could use a personal amplifier to go out to dinner with friends. So. It's uh, good to know those things. Good. Thank you so much for coming today. And we look forward to Marie's next meeting on the third Thursday of I, every other month. Yes, the next so will be September. September. The third Thursday, I believe, is September 15 at 1030 in the Village Square Theater. Okay. I look forward to having people who can hear or people who can't hear or people who think they can hear but they really can't. Okay. <laughs>